This is your host Danny and this is Word Power from English Plus podcast. I'm very happy and proud to present to you the very first episode in our season 3 and this happens to be Word Power, the story of Icarus and Daedalus. Now of course, just like every time in Word Power, we start with a story or a topic and then we choose 10 words to talk about or to focus on from this topic. And today our story is about Icarus and Daedalus. It comes from Greek mythology, but it's a very interesting story and has a very powerful lesson as well. Now the 10 words we're going to focus on are fickle, despise, incarceration, cohesive, cleave, mold, disdain, prompt, quench, and disintegrate. But before we start, let me remind you that there is a link in the description of the episode that will take you to the custom post I created for this episode. And it is so important to take this link Go to my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. You will find in the custom post everything you need to practice these words we're talking about and to review the words we talked about last week. You will have interactive activities you can do on the website directly. And there's also a downloadable PDF with a lot of fun activities that you can use to review the words later. Or if you are a fan of crossword puzzles, word searches, and other activities, you will find them all in the PDF downloadable worksheet. And of course, there is the other link in the description that will take you to my Patreon page. If you like the content I'm creating and you would like to support me to create more of this content, go to my Patreon page, become a patron. There are a lot of great benefits you get when you become patrons, but the greatest benefit of all is that you will be supporting our learning community and helping us continue. And now, without further ado, let's start talking about the story of Icarus and Daedalus. King Minos was the son of Zeus, the most important of the Greek gods. Minos, who ruled the island of Crete, was a fickle ruler. He might love his subjects one day and despise them the next. Daedalus and his son Icarus were the victims of the king's changeable moods. Even though Daedalus had built the famous labyrinth for King Minos, the king had Daedalus and his son imprisoned on an island. There, Daedalus and Icarus spent their days watching seagulls float freely through the air. These birds gave Daedalus an idea for escaping his unjust incarceration. Daedalus began to collect feathers and to form them into huge wings. Then he tied the feathers together with string and poured melted wax over them. As the wax cooled and hardened, it formed a cohesive glue. Next, Daedalus fastened the wings to his shoulders and began to cleave the air by flapping his new wings back and forth. Slowly, he began to rise from the ground and glide over his island prison. When he floated back to Earth, Daedalus immediately began to mold a set of wings for his son. Soon, father and son were prepared to make their escape. But before taking to the air, Daedalus gave Icarus some final advice. Remember, do not soar too high. The heat of the sun will melt the wax and your wings will fall apart. Icarus was young, however, and he disdained all advice from his elders. Once he was in the air, the joy he felt over his escape and the power of his youth prompted him to sail higher and higher into the air. Nothing could quench his desire to reach the heavens. The higher he flew, the warmer the air became. Gradually, the wings grew limp and then they began to disintegrate. Feathers fluttered to the ground. Icarus tried flapping his wings harder and harder, but it was of no use. He fell headlong into the sea. Hearing his son's cries, Daedalus began searching for him, but all he found were hundreds of feathers floating on the sea. He knew Icarus had drowned. So is it ever with youth who try to soar too high and too fast on fragile wings. So it has a powerful lesson, but some people might agree with that, some people might disagree with that. You can share what you think about the story, about the moral of the story, in the comments section on the website. 
But for now, of course, we are here to learn 10 new words, right? Let me remind you again of these 10 words we're going to focus on from the story. The 10 words are fickle, despise, incarceration, cohesive, cleave, mold, disdain, prompt, quench, and disintegrate. So without further ado, let's start with the first set of words, fickle, despise, and incarceration. So let me start with the very first word, fickle, F-I-C-K-L-E. What does that mean? Let's see how we use that in the context of our story of Icarus and Daedalus. We said Minos, who ruled the island of Crete, was a fickle ruler. He might love his subjects one day and despise them the next. So that is the essence of being fickle. What does that mean? Well, obviously, this is not a positive word, right? Or not a positive adjective to use to talk about some people. If you describe someone as fickle, you disapprove of them because they keep changing their mind about what they like or want. And that was exactly how King Minus was. He was just like that, a fickle ruler. And when it comes to rulers, it's a big problem because they have the power to make your life comfortable or miserable. And if it is just based on their mood, it's a big problem. But that was how King Minus was. He was a fickle ruler. So that was our first word. And in the same example, I said that he might love his subjects one day and despise them the next. So that's our next word, despise. D-E-S-P-I-S-E. -S -E. Despise. What does that mean? Now, if you despise someone or something, you dislike them and have a very low opinion on them. That means you look down on them, you scorn them, you loathe them, you basically hate them. And that was the problem with King Minus, the fickle ruler. He might love his subjects one day and despise them the next, and mostly for no good reason. And of course, poor Daedalus and his son Icarus were the victims of the king's changeable moods. And that led eventually to their incarceration. That is our next word, which comes from incarcerate. So what is the meaning of incarceration? In our story, we said that they were imprisoned on an island, Daedalus and his son Icarus, and all day long they just spent their days watching seagulls float freely through the air, and these birds gave Daedalus an idea for escaping his unjust incarceration. Well, from the context, you might notice that incarceration means imprisonment, right? If people are incarcerated, they are kept in a prison or other place against their will, of course. So that is the meaning of incarceration, simply imprisonment, to imprison, to confine someone, to lock up someone. So these are our first three words, fickle, despise, and incarceration. Now let's talk about two more words next, cohesive and cleave. Now these two words came in the context of the plan Daedalus had in mind. Now he watched these birds and he saw how they floated in the air, so he had an idea. He started collecting feathers, he tied the feathers together, he poured melted wax over them, and as the wax cooled and hardened, it formed a cohesive glue. C-O-H-E-S-I-V-E, -E, cohesive. What does that mean? Something that is cohesive consists of parts that fit together well and form a united whole. So they become together all as one. And here, of course, we're talking about glue, right? Cohesive glue. That's how Daedalus planned to leave the island. He was making wings. And the next thing Daedalus had to do, he needed to try them. Now, what do you do with wings? Now, of course, he fastened the wings to his shoulders and began to cleave the air by flapping his new wings back and forth. Now, cleave is something we use with knives or with what we call cleavers, actually. To cleave something means to split or divide it into two separate parts, often violently. And the idea of a cleaver or to cleave something or, God forbid, someone, it's a very violent thought, very violent image. It's to cut, to hack something or someone. But here, of course, we're not using it for anything violent. We're just using it to talk about how Daedalus cleaved the air or began to cleave the air by flapping his new wings. So it is not used in its literal form, but we can use it to talk about the air. Although we can't see how we can cut the air, but that's what Daedalus tried to do, to cut the air with his new wings. Obviously, because he wanted to fly. So that is the meaning of cleave. Now let's move on in the story and learn about the word mold. 
Now, we continue and say, when he floated back to earth, Daedalus immediately began to mold a set of wings for his son. Because the idea worked, he tried it, it worked, it's perfect. Now it is time to mold a set of wings for his son. What does that mean? Mold, by the way, is M-O-L-D or M-O-U-L-D. Both are fine. One is American spelling, the other with the U is British spelling. So, but it doesn't matter. You use the one you like, but the word we have is mold. If you mold a soft substance such as plastic or clay, you make it into a particular shape or into an object. Now, obviously here, there was no mold. He was putting feathers together, pouring wax on them, waiting for them to dry to form this kind of cohesive glue. Yeah, but to mold here, it is like to construct, to sculpt, to forge something. And what was he trying to construct? A set of wings for his son. Because Daedalus's plan was to leave the island. But of course, he was not going to leave the island on his own. He was going to leave the island with his son. So he began to mold a set of wings for his son. And now the problem is that these wings are not sturdy wings. These are not extra strong wings that can never break. Because, after all, he poured wax, and wax has a problem with heat. So, he gave this final advice to his son. Remember, do not soar too high. The heat of the sun will melt the wax, and your wings will fall apart. So, Daedalus was no fool. He knew exactly the risks, and he told his son about the risks. But the problem is that Icarus was young, and he disdained all advice from his elders. And that is our next word, disdain, D-I-S-D-A-I-N, disdain. What does that mean? Now, the feeling of disdain is dislike, scorn, contempt. And if you disdain to do something, you do not do it because you feel that you are too important to do it. That's too stupid for me. I'm more important than that. Who are you to tell me what to do? When you think like that, you disdain the advice. Like Icarus here, he disdained. He was young, and that is common in young people. We were like that when we were younger, and everybody who is young tends to be disdainful. But here, this is our word. To disdain is when you decide not to do what people tell you to do, or not to do what you're supposed to do, because you think you are too important to do it. That's a problem, of course. And in the case of our story, that's a big problem, because Daedalus was not just giving his son a piece of advice. He was giving him serious warning, because guess what? The heat will melt the wax, and you're flying, so with no wings, you will fall. But Icarus was disdainful. He disdained all advice from his elders, obviously from his father. And once he was in the air, the joy he felt over his escape and the power of his youth prompted him to sail higher and higher into the air. Now, here we have the word prompt. P-R-O-M-P-T. Prompt. What does that mean? Now, all of that, the joy, the power of his youth prompted him to sail higher and higher into the air. That is our word. To prompt someone to do something means to make them decide to do it. Like to cause, to move, to stimulate, to inspire someone to do something. And the power of his youth, the joy he felt over his escape, prompted him to sail higher and higher. Caused him, stimulated him. And we continue to say nothing could quench his desire to reach the heavens. Quench is Q-U-E-N-C-H. What does that mean? Well, we use that to talk about thirst, basically. If someone who is thirsty quenches their thirst, they lose their thirst by having a drink. So if you're thirsty, you drink water, so you quench your thirst. But we usually use this word in the opposite direction. You can say nothing can quench my thirst. I'm too thirsty. Nothing can quench my thirst. And to go a step further, nothing can quench your desire. And we used it exactly in the same way here with poor Icarus. Nothing could quench his desire to fly up higher and higher in the sky and reach the sun maybe. But that was his downfall. So that is our word for quench. And now we come to the very last word for today, disintegrate. D-I-S-I-N-T-E-G-R-A-T-E. Disintegrate. Now let's see what happened in the story. Of course, he flew higher and higher because, remember, nothing could quench his desire to reach the heavens. The higher he flew, the warmer the air became, and gradually the wings grew limp, softer, and they began to disintegrate. They began to fall apart. Feathers fluttered to the ground. Icarus tried flapping his wings harder and harder, but it was of no use. 
because the wings disintegrated. That is our word. What does that mean? Disintegrate. If something disintegrates, it becomes seriously weakened and is divided or even destroyed. And that is exactly what happened to his wings. Break down, come apart, crumble. And unfortunately, that was the fate of poor Icarus. But we have our 10 words. Let me remind you again. These words were fickle, despise, incarceration, cohesive, cleave, mold, disdain, prompt, quench, and disintegrate. I hope you like the story of Icarus and Daedalus, and I hope you like the 10 words I chose to focus on in the story. But don't forget, there is no shortcut when it comes to learning new words. If you want to learn new words, I mean really learn the words, and add them to your active vocabulary bank, you need to practice. You might understand everything I've said here, and I hope so, obviously, but you will not remember everything I said here, and you will not remember the words for a long time if you do not practice. But don't worry, I got you covered. There is a link in the description of the episode. Take the link, go to the custom post I created on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. You will find everything you need to practice. You don't have to do all the exercises today or tomorrow. You can do a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow. Now, the best thing ever is to schedule a time even next week. Week. Do a little bit next week. After two weeks, that will cement the words in your active vocabulary bank. And I care about your active vocabulary bank because I want you to use these words in your writing, in your speaking, not just to understand what they mean, which is great, by the way, of course, but you really want to use these words. And I always try to focus on words that you can use in your everyday language, not some words that you're not going to use or you're just going to find in some old play or novel. No, no, these are everyday words. Words. Yes, some of them are big words, but we need big words now and then, right? Anyway, my point is practice, 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 and there is everything you need. There are interactive activities. There's the PDF downloadable worksheet. Everything you need is on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The custom post has a link, and the link is in the description of this episode. Check the description of the episode, go to my website, and practice to your heart's content. And don't forget about supporting me on Patreon because I need every single supporter to keep this show going on. With that being said, I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. This is your host, Danny. I will see you next time.